I've got my own Hello, yes, I'd, I'd like to come back on the point. I'm actually a, a company director of my own business, so I'm a management consultant. Um, and the reason I'm here is not dissimilar to the guy who first had the megaphone, is that I think, I think for too long we've kind of been led to believe that we're all these kind of independent individual beings that have more that separates us than brings us together. And I think entirely the opposite. People are so incredible and so awesome and so diverse and all of those diversities are just interesting little things that we can share with each other and learn from each other. And the time that I've spent on camp I have met more people from different walks of life in the last week than I've probably met in the last two years. And it's been the most heartwarming, inspiring experience. And what are we here to do? We're here to get to know each other to formulate a plan for a better world and then to implement it. It's the most incredible thing that's happened in the world. So I just invite everyone who's got concerns or questions, don't have them at home. Don't look to the Daily Mail or the Sun or even the Guardian to get your opinions. Come and speak to people and start learning who your community actually are and just how brilliant it is to know them. The reason I just stumbled across this megaphone was because uh, I actually came down here to inform people of something which is going to be taking place at uh, Finsbury Square site at 3 o'clock, so there's not long. I'm going to be heading up there uh, to, um, to a workshop which is going to give an example of renewable modular construction, the kind of thing which can help this movement and I believe could actually revolutionise the revolution, if you like. Um, I therefore invite any of you who are interested in knowing what the hell modular renewable construction is, uh, you can come and see a working demo of it. If you want to come and see me, you can follow me up to Finsbury Square if you don't know the way. Uh, and I think that it will blow your mind in a good way. Okay, I'm up for that, mate. Just, just to those little children, I don't know if you saw a whole school a classroom went past. You guys need to look at what's going on here because when you grow up, this will be illegal. <laughs> so just remember, you won't be able to do this when you're big, so enjoy it. <laughs> I know the people mostly can't see the person holding this megaphone, that's because I'm sitting in a wheelchair. One of the things I want you to know is I could be sitting at home in the nice, warm, cosy atmosphere with my carers looking after me and I feel compelled to get on the streets of London because this movement represents something that we really need. <coughs> It's making me ill being here and I still will be here. Unless we gather, gather our voices now, we won't have one. Absolutely. Nothing else to say. That's it. Cheers. Are you alright, Bobby? Yeah. Hey, I just want to do a shout out for uh, a talk happening at Tennessee University in five minutes about connecting universities and social movements, looking at examples from Latin America and South Africa and so on. Um, it should be really interesting. Um, so please come along. Tennessee University just over there. I am unemployed. I went through the meat factory that is the British education system where they don't teach you to think for yourself, they process you to be a member of a company where they teach you and they process you and there's no free thinking whatsoever. You are human capital. I have spent the hardest four week, four months of my life sitting at home unemployed, getting rejection after rejection because my degree is worthless because I was accredited by an organisation that was dissolved about a month after I graduated. My degree is now worthless and no one will take me. This is wrong. We are not human capital. We are individuals working in a society for the betterment of one another. Not for these right-wing, evil human beings like us, but they've got the money. Um, fascism is defined as a, uh, me, me, it's defined as a melding of corporate interests and the state, and that is exactly what we have here. We are on the road to fascism. It will not come jackbooted down the street singing Deutschland über Alice. It will come wrapped in the British pound coin and carrying the Union Jack. Thank you. You don't mean that. No, man. You're wrong. Yeah. Major, say, it doesn't matter whether you are unemployed or you are employed. What this camp represents is a community which we all stick together. If anyone needs anything, they ask and they receive. 
So it doesn't matter whether you are unemployed, you bankers, or you're unemployed, you wankers. <laughs> 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 You agree? Shit. You Last agree. night, we had a meeting with some sort of uh, big old politician bloke. I gave him a bit of a challenge. Because I was a, I was under care when I was put in care when I was one and a half years old. If not, maybe I'll send them. He didn't know it was me. I'll, I'll, check, I'll check this out. But I was in 27 children's homes, 5 foster homes and 2 secure units. As soon as I was 18 years old, the care system didn't give a shit. The government didn't give a shit. I went here, in Westminster and in central London to ask for help for homes. And I asked for help for other people as well. Did they care? No. Because the only thing they're spending their money on is the 2012 Olympics. Alright? They don't care if they people just stay on the streets because they just give them a ticket. Or as if they got three tickets and as bow. 24, 48 hour as bow. So, what is it? Are we going to get a life or are we going to have be controlled by the bankers, the politicians, the Lord Mayor? Alright, but listen, people have now start to get, speak out their own words. If you don't speak out, they won't listen. One last message to the City of London Corporation, to the business that is the church, and to the business that is uh, the political system. The game is up. We've exposed you. People will know who you are and what you're doing. And your time is numbered. Inside camps and everything else. I deplore the reality that we have a separate sovereign state in Great Britain. So many people are not aware of the fact that the City of London is not bound by the laws of this country. Okay. They act as a tax haven for bankers and people who have loads of money. And this is happening right in the heart of our own city. The laws here are different from the laws of our land. This is like the Vatican City. For the whole time this tent city stood here, I've got to say I'm very proud of England. Unlike in America where their tent city was destroyed, I heard yesterday. So for whilst this tent city is here, it represents liberty and freedom to me, and I'm very, very proud to be in this country and part of this country. There are injustices everywhere, even here. We talk on about them all day. But at the end of the day, I think it's lovely that this freedom has been given. Thank you. Like the last speaker, I too am proud of being British. It turns out we've got the best laws in this land in that we're only bound by common law, which is to harm nobody and steal nothing. Everything else beyond that law is a statute invented by the powers that be to control and manipulate capital from us. Most of the laws, everybody knows this, most of the laws that keep getting bought in these days are directly related to the taking more money out of the pocket of the working man and working woman. And this is something that needs to be recognised and stopped. As I've, I've been involved in running small businesses, as we've got more uh, capital coming into our business, more health and safety regulations and more permissions and certificates are required to do our job. So as we increase our income, the government increases what it takes from us. This isn't going to encourage people to get off their backsides and work. 
It's going to be better for people to sit on the dole and do nothing. Because whenever you get out there and do do a job and have self-respect for yourself, you get torn down by the powers that be and the taxes and the new regulations that are put in place. I represent disabled people here just by my very being here. And I know that there's many more disabled people sitting back on in the uh, what we call the back line, on computers, lobbying MPs, trying to make a difference to the world we live in. I've no com I don't have to do anything. I could sit on my backside all day and live on benefits, and I choose not to. I choose to try and make a positive statement about the necessary changes in this world. Because when it comes down to it, I want our children to inherit something that's worthy. And that's the issue here. We're not fighting for here and now. The laws that will be changed now by our actions here will benefit our children and our grandchildren. And like that last person said to all the little children walking past from St Paul's Cathedral, take a look at what's happening here. Because unless people stand up and be counted and have their voices heard, protesting against an oppressive uh, regime will be made illegal. So I'm right here right now because we have a right to be here. This is a place where freedom of speech is supposed to be something that's available to all, but it's freedom of speech as long as you don't say too much. Well, right here, right now, we are saying a lot, and, and I address directly the people in Paternoster Square. We know now what the Corporation of London is about. It's about protecting the financial interests of the very richest of the rich. And no matter how many people you take off this protest, a dozen more will step in place because it's inherently wrong and inherently corrupt to create a two-tier system where people have more money than they can logistically spend in their lifetime and other people don't even have enough pasta or beans to put on their, their children's plates. So if we don't right the wrongs in this system, it's going to get worse. And ultimately speaking, we need the help of you people in Paternoster Square. We need you to devise a banking system that will get us gently away from the system that's inherently corrupt and back towards a system that's inherently just.